Equilibrium climate sensitivity is just the amount of global warming that we expect for a doubling of carbon dioxide from pre-industrial levels. Pre-industrial levels were about 280 parts per million. We've now increased them to about 405 parts per million. Uh, once we reach 550 parts per million, which at current rates of fossil fuel burning will do sometime in the middle of this century, um, we will have doubled the concentration of greenhouse gases. If you double the concentration of greenhouse gases, of CO2 specifically, and allow the climate to come into equilibrium to a new steady state, how much would it have warmed? That's the equilibrium climate sensitivity. There's the kind of classic scientific definition, and people have spent a lot of time working on that. Let's say the number is uh, three degrees, something like that. Most estimates point to it being somewhere around three degrees Celsius, but some models predict as little as two, some as much as four and a half or five degrees Celsius. Um, and so there's uncertainty there. Uncertainty isn't our friend because, you know, what if the models that predict more than the consensus warming are the ones that are right. What we found is that the models that simulate the recent past the best are models that tend to produce more warming in the future. And so what that really does is it cuts off the uh, probability of these low estimates of warming and really makes the estimates on the higher end uh, appear to be more likely. And I think now it's quite clear that those estimates of low ECS, climate sensitivity, during the 20th century are too low. They don't actually reflect the real ECS of our climate system. What we're finding is the evidence may indeed be pointing towards the problem being worse than we had estimated, not better. Um, if uncertainty is not our friend. That accelerated warming that we have seen in recent years, which really does reinforce all of the other evidence that um, the climate system is potentially uh, even more sensitive to greenhouse gas increases than we thought. So I think the, the resolution is going to be high climate sensitivity, or maybe not high, but higher than the low end of the IPCC record, so three to four, somewhere around there, is sort of my best guess now. So that's a good thing to know, but it doesn't tell you all that much. Really what you need to know to make more sense of it is what will happen to the planet if the temperature goes up three degrees. No one in 30 years ago would have predicted that most of the summer sea ice in the Arctic would be gone, for instance. And no one would have predicted the extremes of drought and rainfall that we're already seeing. How sensitive are civilizations, i.e. our political, economic, psychological systems to any given degree of change? And again, we don't really know. I mean, but it appears that they're pretty sensitive. Uh, if a hurricane hits Puerto Rico and does a hundred billion dollars worth of damage and Puerto Rico's GDP is a hundred and five billion dollars, well you get a sense that it's going to be a very long time if ever before Puerto Rico is back to where it was uh, 18 months ago. So um, these sensitivities pile on top of each other and they're the reason that we have to be so worried about where we are. What's happened here is what's happened to all of the skeptical arguments. You know, in the 2000s, it was the surface temperature record isn't reliable because all of these thermometers are next to air conditioners. Uh, so that was investigated and that was rejected. And then global warming stopped in 1998. Well, it restarted. So that idea has been discarded. So this idea that climate sensitivity from observations is a lot lower than the models, where the models are running hot, that's headed for the junkyard of discredited ideas of climate skeptics. And in a year or two, nobody except the true dead-enders are going to be uh, making that claim.